Welcome to English Service at New Life Fellowship. Thank you for tuning in to New Life Fellowship Facebook. Hey, when you watch, don't just watch it yourself, you know, invite others to watch with you as well. This is cool. You know, so that we all can learn together from the Word of God. My Word can tell you something, give you ideas and advice and stuff like that. But the Word of God will change my life, will change your life as well. So I'm going to bring the Word of God to you again this week. So the this topic of my sermon this afternoon, talking about the preparation of the Apostles' work. Jesus always had planned, had planned for this, had planned for that. This is Jesus help the disciple, the apostle, to prepare for a greater work. In the books of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1 to 9. I'm going to read it to us. So I'm going to read from ESV translation. In the first book, this first book is written, I mean this book, the books of Acts was written by Luke. So in the first books, there was a book of Luke. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. He keep record and dealt with all of that until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit. He gave command through the Holy Spirit to the apostle whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. After he died and rose again, he appears himself to many people and he continued the work of God. Even though he had 40 days, he going around and tell people about his kingdom, the kingdom of God. Verse 4. And while staying with them, Jesus staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. Tell them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you hear, you heard from me. Tell the apostle, you heard from me. For John, the apostle John, baptized with water. But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel. So Jesus is going around and preach and teach about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God in heaven. But this disciple was concerning about the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom on this earth. Verse 7, he said to them, it's not for you to know the time or season what the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight this is a testimony that luke collected from the people that was alive at that time this is cool this is a real story that god always has a plan and he helps us to know his plans as well. 
he didn't keep it to himself. God always give us, as believers, his power. He had a plan, and in that plan, in, in that plan, he gave people powers to fulfill his purpose. He have a plan, he give the power, and he has a purpose. He have a plan for you, he give you the power, and he have you to fulfill the purpose that he has for you. God wants the whole world to know him and have relationship with him. Therefore, he appointed his apostles to help him in doing this work. But in that appointment, he gave instruction to them as well. According to these scriptures, I can pick some points which is six points that I learned from the scriptures. Point number one, he tell us to wait. There is a waiting, waiting on God, waiting upon God, waiting for to hear his instruction. It's a waiting where? It's a specific place, you know? And the other thing, after you wait, you will receive a gift from the Father. There's a gift from the Father for every one of us. And after that, after waiting, after receiving a gift, that gift is the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And after baptism of the Holy Spirit, then there is a transfer. There will be a transfer of power from Him to you, to me, to, to everyone. And then there will be a witness witness from what they have seen and experienced themselves and then they will be entrusted God will entrust you and I to do this work for him so this week we're gonna focus on waiting waiting on God waiting on God is it easy to wait I don't think so not easy to wait. We want everything now. <laughs> we want everything now. We can't wait sometimes. But God say wait for him in this point. In the book of Psalm, chapter 130, verse 5. I wait for the Lord. I wait for the Lord. And my soul waits. And in his word, I hope. You wait to hear from him and that that word that we're sending out to you to me that word will give you and I hope there is a hope in the Word of God therefore we need to wait to listen to the Word of God so that we know what to do accordingly in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 30 to 31 even youth shall faint youth young people people full of energy people full of strength even youth shall faint even the people that have strength shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted <laughs> sometimes we fall exhausted but they who wait for the Lord but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength but they but if you are to wait for the Lord if I am to wait for the Lord we will get our strength renewed and they shall mount up with wings like eagles. When you wait on God, when you wait to hear from the word of God, you will mount up, you will have strength. Your strength will be increasing and we can fly like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Meaning, it's okay, even though you run, even though you walk, 
it's okay for you because you got strength from the Lord God it's important for us important for you and I to wait on God wait on God in the waiting also there there is an appointment appointment between you and God there's a wedding between there's a wedding between me and God waiting where waiting at a specific place get a specific place to wait on God without getting distracted without getting interrupted by other a special a uh, specific place its appointment mark in um, chapter 1 with 35 and rising very early in the morning while it was still dark he who is he well it's still dark he is Jesus Jesus departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed early in the morning well early nobody one no, no one is awake yet nobody is awake yet Jesus go out and Jesus find a time to pray to wait on God the Father a specific place even though Jesus could wait could make appointment with his Heavenly Father how about you and I we need to do the same thing right we need to do the same thing we need to find time make appointment to meet with God daily weekly monthly it's important for us not not one time a month if possible every day do it it will help you and I as well and in waiting as well there will be a, um, a, uh, a preparation in waiting preparation you prepare it's your part and my part get ourselves ready prepare be prepared to meet with God you get a, a piece of paper you get a tablet or phone but turn it off and you know get your Bible in preparation to write down what was saying speaking to you preparation prepare get yourself ready in the book of Exodus chapter 19 verse 10 the Lord said to Moses go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments he said prepare get them ready because he is going the Lord God is going to come and see them and talk to Moses for those who's not clean who who got messed up and stuff who's not ready it's not good they will miss the opportunity of hearing God of seeing God of learning from God prepare prepare yourself really well in the book of Psalm in preparation also chapter 24 with 3 to 4 who shall ascend the heel of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and pure heart who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully clean hand and a pure heart go before God just get our hearts ready it's not so messy when our hearts not ready when our heart is complicated and stuff like that it's not good 
we cannot receive from God even though God talked to us. We cannot hear Him. So you and I, when in preparation, in prayer, and getting to hear from God, we need to prepare. Put everything aside. Then involve with that kind of stuff. You might have a lot of stuff. You might have got stuff, a lot of stuff's going on, but put it aside. Just prepare yourself. Get yourself ready to meet with God, to hear from God. It's going to benefit you a lot. And in waiting as well, there will be an expectation. Expectation. What, what will you get from that? Take a lot of patience in expectation to receive something from the Lord is require a lot of patience. Are you willing to be patient to get what God wants for you? Some people, they rush the process without waiting. When they rush, they don't get full. For example, the fruit, when I was young, you know, um, there's a guava tree behind my house. My grandma told me that that guava is really nice and sweet. But guess what? I was expecting the guava to ripe faster. <laughs> so it can't meet my need right away. So I would climb the tree and look at it almost every day. And then, you know, I lost my patience and I picked the guava and eat before it ripe. It didn't taste that good. So we have to wait for the right time and your expectation will meet later. And you will experience that that guava is nice and sweet. In life, we have a lot of expectation on things. Sometimes people would pray, pray a little bit and ask God a little bit, and they lost their patience. They have, their expectation is high, and they want it now. It's not good. No, cannot like that. Have to wait when the right time to come you will benefit from it. In the book of Genesis, there's a cool story. Chapter 29, verse 10. The young man looking to get married. He need a wife. And this man, he's willing to do anything because he loves that girl. That man by the name of Jacob. He loved Rachel. And Rachel's dad said, before you get married to my daughter, you have to serve, serve me, serve my family for seven years. So with 20, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed to him, but a few days because of love he had for her. Seven years. It's not that fast, seven years. But to Jacob for seven years, it's okay. It's okay for him. Because he loves that girl. He loves Rachel. Seven years, it's okay for you and I as well. Even though 10 years, even though 15 years, 20 years, you can wait. Be patient. The result of waiting on God is really nice. It will cause you, it will cause you, cause you to trust in God's ability even more. And you wait on God. God, in your timing, you will trust God. We find yourself that you will trust God even more and more and more. And also, you will find yourself 
that you have a better character and better behavior. You are more patient than before. More patient than before. People will say, oh, that person, that man, that woman, that girl, that guy is a patient person. It's really nice. He's willing to wait. And also, when you're waiting on God, it will help you to see from different angle, from another angle to a perspective that you are looking at. You can look from all sides. This is important, my brothers and sisters. What's going on right now in your life? You need to listen to God. You need God instruction. You need some breakthrough in your life. I bet you do need some breakthrough. You need some instruction from God. Hey, young people, if you want to get married to a great man, a great woman, it's good for you to wait on God, God's timing. Don't rush the process. Wait on the right timing. During wait period of time, develop yourself to be a better man and a better woman so that when you get married, you'll become a good wife, a good husband, and you become a good parent as well. For those who are doing businesses, when you wait on God, you will study that business from different angles as well. It's really good to wait on God, different angles. And you can see, oh, we shouldn't do this and we should do that. This is important for us. And for parents as well, when you wait on God, you will have a lot of wisdom to teach and to lead your children as well. For those who are in much fear, when you wait on God, you will find confidence in God. And your fear starts to fade away as well. I have a lot of examples, you know, to show us. But waiting on God is important. Disciple was instructed by God to change the world. But before changing the world, God said, wait for my instruction. Wait. Wait in Jerusalem. Can you change the world? It's hard to change the world. But through God's help, we can make and help the people to be transformed, to be changed, to have relationship with the one true God as well. Today, I would like to pray for you. I don't know what are you, you know, what in the middle of your thought or your thinking right now. But I want to recommend us, whatever you do, continue. To wait on God with preparation, expectation. You will get that. God will bless you a lot. I believe that. Blessing is part of God's plan. Blessing is part of God's plans in our life. So, you know, just wait for the right time. You will get it. Allow me to pray for you. My Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for my brothers and sisters that's willing to wait. May this heart be soft and tender so that we can wait on you. We can do your will, not our will, but your will be done, Lord God. Lord God, put a hedge of protection over my brothers and sisters. And bless them and bless their family. Bless what they are doing. Help every one of us to encounter you every single day in our life as we wake up. Bless every one of them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.
Thank you so much.